Shirla's story is one that sounds like it's straight out of a fairy tale, from the euphoric highs of karting championships and wins with the Tifosi to the heartbreaking tragedies in his personal life. The man has seen more drama than a soap opera. This is the rise and fall of Charles Leclerc. Born in the city of La Gondamine, nestled in Monaco, Charlotte inherited his love for motorsport from his father, Hervé, a man that had already left his tire tracks in the world of Formula 3. Together, they would embark on a wholesome little adventure, starting with races at a track in the charming town of Brignoles. It was there that Charlotte befriended a certain Jules Bianchi, a talented pilot who became his close companion, despite their eight-year age difference. In 2010, Charlotte faced a challenge when his father realized they couldn't afford to finish the karting season. In terms of money, we have no money. But fate stepped in when Jules Bianchi, along with his manager Nicolas Dud, came to the rescue. Nicolas, a son of the legendary Jean Dud, who had steered Ferrari to its glorious era, ensured that Charles received the financial support he needed. Charles continued his karting journey, ultimately winning the prestigious International Karting Commission (CIK) title in 2011, a feat that the great Ayrton Senna had pursued unsuccessfully until his 22nd year. Like modern day Cinderella, Charlotte continued his journey, facing some incredibly fierce and talented competitors along the way, one of whom was this guy called Max Verstappen. You probably haven't heard of him. In 2014, he stepped up to race in Monopostos, finishing as the runner-up in the Formula Renault 2.0 Alps Championship, narrowly behind another talented Dutchman, Nick de Vries. However, tragedy struck in 2014 when Charles lost his dear friend Jules Bianchi in a tragic accident during a race in Japan. The loss deeply impacted Charles, but he pressed on, finishing fourth in the European Formula 3 Championship that year and securing second place in the prestigious Macau Grand Prix. In 2016, Charles would then claim the GP3 title, now Formula 3. His celebrations, however, would be short-lived. The following year, tragedy once again struck Leclerc during the 2017 season when his father, Elve, passed away just days before the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in GP2. His father, Elve, ailing in his final days, had received a heartfelt promise from Schala. Dad, I'm going to race in Formula 1 in 2018. I'll never truly overcome it, perhaps I never will, Schala confessed about his father's passing but I never doubted that I would continue. All I ever wanted was to race. Despite the profound grief that weighed heavily on his heart, Leclerc played a tribute to his father by adorning his car with a heartfelt je t'aime à papa. I love you, dad. Only three days later, he showcased his supernatural talent by securing pole position with a staggering six-tenths advantage. Leclerc's decision to join forces with Prema in GP2, a team that had previously conquered the championship, had already bolstered his prospects. So when he clinched the title as a rookie, nobody was surprised. Nobody could catch him. The kid was special, and the manner of his title victory was a testament to that. When the dust settled at the end of the season, Leclerc stood tall with an astonishing 72-point lead over his closest rival. Charles' speed remained unwavering even in the face of tragedy. He was born to race. In 2017, in the mid-season tests at the Hunger Roaring in Formula 1, he finished first on the first day of testing and impressed the Ferrari team so much in the process that he earned himself a place in Sauber's race lineup for the 2018 season. His debut in Australia saw him qualify 18th and bring the car home in a commendable 13th place. As he grew more comfortable in the car, his breakthrough came at the fourth round in Baku, where he achieved a remarkable sixth place finish, the best result for both himself and Sauber that year. Leclerc's rookie season in Formula 1 had proven to be a resounding success as he firmly established himself on the prestigious grid. His maturity behind the wheel made it seem like he'd been in F1 for years. After outscoring his team, teammate Marcus Ericsson by an impressive 30 points, it was apparent that Leclerc was more than just a talented driver. Impressed by his performance, Ferrari signed Leclerc to partner Sebastian Vettel for the 2019 season. And the fact that he had replaced a certain Kimi Raikkonen, you know, the last man to win a title in Ferrari colours, put a lot of pressure on him. 
Charlotte's first season at Ferrari commenced with a strong fifth-place finish at the Australian GP, a significant milestone followed as he earned his first pole position in Bahrain, positioning himself for a potential victory until engine troubles dashed his hopes. Nevertheless, he still secured his maiden podium finish and fastest lap, a thrilling duel with Max Verstappen in Austria after securing his second pole position further solidified Leclerc's growing reputation. Speaking of growing reputations, it's seems that you guys have been enjoying my videos quite a bit, so feel free to subscribe for more. Although victory eluded him, the intense battle showcased his immense talent and resilience. He was more than a match for the most prodigious talent F1 had seen since Lewis Hamilton. Finally, Leclerc achieved his breakthrough triumph on an incredible weekend at spa francorchamps the day after the tragic loss of his friend Antoine Hubert, he stood atop the podium, his emotions mingling with bittersweet triumph. A week later, Leclerc delighted Ferrari's loyal Tifosi fanbase with another victory at Monza, narrowly fending off a pursuit from the relentless Lewis Hamilton. Ferrari's golden boy had arrived, and he was here to stay. Concluding his inaugural season with Ferrari, Leclerc tallied an impressive record, with two wins, seven pole positions, four fastest laps and 10 podium finishes, it was obvious that Schaller was the future. So it surprised absolutely nobody when Ferrari secured Leclerc with a new long-term contract that surpassed the tenure of even Sebastian Vettel. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> The anticipation surrounding Leclerc was high for the 2020 season after a strong debut year with Ferrari. However, the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted preparations, and Ferrari's car that year failed to deliver the expected Grand Prix winning performance. An investigation into Ferrari's power unit by the FIA, followed by a private settlement, also resulted in the disappearance of their once dominant straight-line speed advantage. Although Leclerc kicked off the season with an impressive second-place finish at the Austrian Grand Prix, his subsequent results were mixed. He managed to secure a third-place finish at the British GP, but only achieved top five finishes on four more occasions throughout the season. Disappointingly, he ended the year in a lowly eighth place in the overall standings. Nevertheless, he still managed to outscore his teammate Vettel comfortably for the second consecutive year, with Vettel's departure from Ferrari already confirmed. In 2021, Ferrari began to show signs of improvement. Leclerc's home Grand Prix, in particular, held great promise as he secured a coveted pole position in qualifying. However, a crash during Q3 dashed his hopes, and a drive shaft problem on the way to the grid prevented him from even starting the race. He secured pole position again in Baku, but could only convert it into a fourth place finish. A shining moment emerged at the British Grand Prix, where Leclerc showcased his brilliance by surging into first place after Max Verstappen. Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton came together. Despite facing power unit troubles, Leclerc valiantly held on to his position until Hamilton overtook him in the final two laps. The second place finish remained his best result for the remainder of the season, with three additional fourth place finishes in the remaining races. Leclerc had gone winless for the first time in his Formula One career. The new technical regulations in 2022 offered Ferrari a golden opportunity to reclaim their place at the forefront of Formula One, and for Leclerc to finally stake a claim for the Drivers' Championship. It was obvious to anyone watching that Ferrari's best shot at a Drivers' title would be the man from Monaco. Leclerc got off to a flyer. The Monegasque kicked off the 2022 season with pole positions, race victories and the fastest laps in two out of the three events, but after that, things started going wrong. The headlines screamed of the title defeat, despite the 24-year-old commanding the championship with an astonishing 46-point lead after three races, all thanks to a Ferrari that emerged as their most competitive machine in over a decade. Yet, when the season reached its conclusion, he found himself a staggering 146 points behind the triumphant Max Verstappen. There was an unfortunate spin at Imola that cost him a podium finish, followed by the regrettable mishap at Paul Ricard, where he relinquished the lead, and most likely the victory. However, it wasn't solely his own missteps that hindered his progress. The team made its fair share of blunders as well. Ill-fated strategy calls dropped him from the lead on occasions such as Monaco, Silverstone and Hungary. Box, box now, box for hard. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Why, what, 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 what
Furthermore, he suffered the frustration of two engine failures while leading the pack in Spain and Azerbaijan. No, no, no. Ferrari's lack of in-season development not only resulted in losing ground to the dominant Red Bull, but they also found themselves being outperformed by a Mercedes team that started the year languishing in the midfield. So, unsurprisingly, after the race in Spa, with eight more contests remaining, Leclerc came to the realization that his chances of clinching the title were all but gone. Using all that to crucify Leclerc and cast doubt on his ability would definitely be harsh, and it makes even less sense considering 2022 was by far the most successful campaign of his career so far. Notably, he secured a remarkable nine pole positions, more than any other driver in 2022. In the battle against his teammate, he dominated the qualifying season, outshining Carlos Sainz with a commanding 15-7 lead. Although the race performances were more closely contested, he still came out on top, prevailing the 12-9 margin. Along the way, he triumphed in three Grand Prix races, marking his most successful season to date, while Saint managed only a solitary victory. With a total of 308 points, he amassed a significant lead of 44 over his previous best. Undoubtedly, last year was a remarkable year for Leclerc. If only there had been better reliability, more astute strategic decisions, fewer errors behind the wheel and perhaps a touch of good fortune. The outcome could have been entirely different. Perhaps he could have genuinely gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Max for the title. Now in 2023, it has been even more disappointing for Leclerc. At the Bahrain Grand Prix, Leclerc faced technical difficulties, forcing an early end to his race while on track for a third-place finish. Undeterred, he faced a 10-place grid penalty in the next race, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, due to unauthorized control electronics on his car. Starting 12th, Leclerc showcased his skills by battling back to secure a respectable 7th place finish, closely trailing his teammate Carlos Sainz. However, the Australian Grand Prix brought disappointment as Leclerc retired following a collision with Lance Stroll on the first lap. Inside of the Stappen, didn't hear any banging wheels. In the background goes Charles Leclerc into the gravel. Leclerc bounced back at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, securing Ferrari's first pole position of the season. Although he couldn't convert it into a victory, Sergio Perez claimed the win and Leclerc stood on the podium for both the sprint and main races. The Miami Grand Prix proved challenging, with Leclerc starting 7th after a crash in qualifying and finishing in the same position. In his hometown event, the Monaco Grand Prix, Leclerc showcased his resilience by qualifying 3rd but starting 6th due to a grid penalty. Despite the setback, he fought valiantly to secure a sixth place finish. In Spain, Leclerc faced adversity, qualifying 19th and starting from the pit lane. Nevertheless, he persevered to claim an 11th place finish. The Canadian Grand Prix presented an opportunity for redemption, as Leclerc qualified 11th and started 10th. Opting against a pit stop during a safety car period, Leclerc and Saints held strong in 4th and 5th positions. Leclerc crossed the finish line in 4th place, narrowly missing out on a podium finish with less than five seconds separating him from third-placed Hamilton. Now, there is heightened speculation around Leclerc's future at Ferrari, with rumors from the paddock suggesting that Mercedes have been eyeing up the Ferrari man to replace Lewis Hamilton. But you have to keep in mind, everything surrounding Ferrari is magnified. The spotlight, the pressure, the euphoria of triumph, and the criticism during difficult times. It is obvious it doesn't phase Leclerc. The kid throughout his life has shown that he embraces the highs and lows with open arms, and it won't be long before we witness his resurgence. And maybe this is wishful thinking on my part, but I really do hope Ferrari get their crap together and give their prodigal son what he needs, because he seems to be getting more agitated with the Italian outfit each race weekend in his interviews, and we might just see him jump ship despite all the love he has for the team. And that's a wrap folks. If you want to see more content like this, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. If you want to find out what happened to Charlotte's beloved friend, go watch my video on the day Formula One changed forever.